Hello, and welcome back to our discussion on acids and bases. We're going to finish up today's um, series with a little bit more discussion about what species are present using the pKa and pH, but now we're going to use some biological examples so we see what happens when drugs go into your body and how the pH can affect them. In the previous section, we talked about how we could use pH and pKa to determine what form of an acid would be present in a certain solution. Now we're going to apply that to a biological example to see what form of a drug would be present in different pH conditions, like the kinds you would see in your body. You may not know it yet, but drug solubility is a big deal. This is something that can affect whether or not the drugs can even get to where they're trying to go, or whether they'll actually be in an effective form once they get there. By understanding the general pKa for a specific functional group, we can predict the form of a drug that will be present in different parts of your body. At this point, you know a lot of the pKa's for different functional groups because they were given on the chart for the sum pKa's activity. So hopefully you'll recognize some of those as we go through. Let's start with an example of an anesthetic. This is something that's a numbing agent for your body. This molecule contains several functional groups. If we haven't gone into detail about functional groups, don't worry, we will. Basically, for now, all you have to know is that they're anything that's not a carbon-carbon single bond, or a carbon-hydrogen single bond. So double bonds would count, anything else would count. These are our three functional groups. Here we have an aromatic, here we have an amide, and here we have an amine. Note it's a protonated amine, but that's still an amine because it has nitrogen and carbons attached. The only one that's really affected by the pH is going to be the amine here. And as you can see, I've written the pKa below as pKa is equal to 7.9. Since this is actually in the acidic form, we'd also want to know what the conjugate base is going to look like. So I'm going to draw that up here. So as you can see, the majority of the structure is the same. The only functional group that's going to change is the amine. And before where it had an H+, I've taken off the H+, so now the charge goes to neutral. If we're going to talk about solubility, then we also need to talk about like dissolves like. So remember that's usually a distinction between polar and nonpolar. So let's try to figure out what's going on inside our body. So the volume of your blood is mostly made of water. So would that be polar or nonpolar? That's right, it's going to be polar. Then inside of your membranes, that's going to be mostly inside the phospholipid bilayer. The inside of that bilayer should be nonpolar. The pH of your blood and inside of your cells is usually about 7.4. Remember we said earlier it's very close to neutral. So with all that set up, let's see what would happen to this molecule inside of the body when it goes from your blood to inside your cells. So let's draw out what's going to happen when a drug tries to go into your cell. Let's abbreviate a little bit so we don't have to draw quite this whole structure. So the acid form abbreviation, we're just going to have be this purple thing, which is the NH plus form, right? Because the NH plus is up here. Remember, the conjugate base form doesn't have that H plus. That just comes off to make it neutral. So I'm just going to draw that as a green form with an N and no proton. So I'll go ahead and draw my cell membrane here. So that way we can tell above is going to be the blood and then inside is going to be inside the cell. And remember we said that both of those have a pH of about 7.4, which is slightly below the pKa, which means that um, the majority of the molecule will be in its acid form. So starting with number one, we're outside of the cell. Both the acid and conjugate base will be in equilibrium with slightly more of the acid form. But as they get close to the cell membrane, only one of these forms can actually go through the membrane. Remember that's going to be the nonpolar one, which would be the conjugate base form in this case. Once it gets through the membrane, it's going to be over here, and now it's no longer in equilibrium. We only have the product side. So once it forms an equilibrium of its own, it's going to actually start converting to form more of the acid form, as you can see here. So then what happens to the outside of the cell? The acid is reacting to form more of the conjugate base. We've removed the product, so we're going to get more product formed from the acid form that we had before. So as we said before, if we're removing the product, we're going to form more of the product so that equilibrium can be reestablished using Le Chatelier's principle. So once this forms, these green ones will now be able to go through the membrane again and the whole process will continue. Eventually, most of the drug will end up inside the cell and most of it will be in the form of the purple because it will go back to the acid form when the pH is 7.4. 
So in this one example, we've basically seen it all. We've seen acids turning into conjugate bases and them going back again in equilibrium. We've seen Le Chatelier's principle at work pushing the product forward. So it really all comes together in these examples. And hopefully it does it in a way that makes sense to you. If you want to recreate what I've drawn here, which I highly recommend, then I would draw it as separate slides. So you could draw number one as a box, draw the picture, number two as a box, draw the picture, like that. And basically you'll have it laid out kind of like a comic book. So with that process, we've seen how the drug solubility changes based on the acidity and the pH and how that affects the equilibrium and the mobility, meaning how the molecule moves through your body. Other factors that come into play are where is a certain drug absorbed in your body. So, for example, in your digestive tract, in your stomach, it's very, very acidic, but in your intestines, it's more basic than that. So different organs have different pHs, and that'll affect which form of a drug it is at that time. Chemists will also choose different functional groups based on how long they want the drug to stay in your system. For example, doctors can actually prescribe molecules that will change the pH of your urine and affect how long the drug stays in your body. It really is fascinating how drugs are affected by pH and pKa's, and I've designed an activity that goes into more detail of this. It's actually about barbiturates, which are a drug that were very popular a long time ago, but are still used today. Um, I've created this to talk about drug design. However, it depends on the class if we'll have enough time to go over it this year. So keep a lookout for that in the activity folder, but if you don't see it, then don't worry about it. On the other hand, I promise that if I do assign it, we'll talk about it in more detail, so don't worry either way. So that's the conclusion of talking about pKa's and acids, molecules, and drugs. I hope you enjoyed the culmination of all the chemistry into a biological context. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and write them down, and you can bring them to class and ask me, or you can ask me via email. I hope you have a great day. Bye!